I needed to dial in the size of some features very precisely, and I know that color compensation is the way to do it. So I set about to do it, and it just made no sense to me. So I made a video. One of the things uh, that I want to do, and let me show you the part, is be able to dial in a dimension to be able to do some trial and error. This is for a gasket, and I don't know, because I haven't been able to find any documentation, how much smaller I need to make the opening to get the right seal. I know I need to have some amount of, of crush force here to make sure that it uh, makes a seal, but I don't know how much. So what I want to do is I want to try different sizes, and I could do that in two ways. One is that I could go into the computer and I could change uh, for that operation the amount of stock to leave in between a positive number and a negative number, posting it each time until I get a number that actually works well. The other approach that I can take is something known as cutter compensation. What this does is it allows me to output a single toolpath, and then from the machine on the controller, I can put in a number that allows me to change the compensation. There are different types of compensation. If I open this and show you, you can see that we have, actually if I hover over this, it'll show you. So you can see that I have in computer, in control, where, inverse where. Now, in computer is effectively when you're not doing any compensation. Then in control is where you are putting in a diameter of the tool into the control. And so this is useful for cases where you can actually measure the diameter of the tool. Number three, where, is the one that sounded of most interest to me. This is where you put in a number, which is a small number, like one thousandths of an inch, two thousandths of an inch, that says how much to change the size of features. Now, what I didn't understand is exactly what number to set in the field on the controller for that. Because this description doesn't really help. This description says, works as if in computer was selected, but also outputs G41 and G42. What does that mean? I have no idea. Then it says, this lets the machine tool operator adjust the tool wear at the machine tool control. Yep, that's exactly what I want to do by entering the difference in tool size as a negative number. Okay, here's the, the next problem. How are you calculating the difference? Is it the difference between the nominal and the actual, which would result in a positive number, or is it the difference between the actual and the nominal, which would result in a negative number? I suspect it's the first, but this doesn't make it very clear. The other thing that's not clear to me is exactly how this is going to map when I put in numbers to changes in the dimension or the equivalent of stock to leaf. So that's what I'm sending out to figure out in this episode. I did more research, couldn't find a good answer, so I posted a message on the Titans of CNC Facebook group and got the reply you see here, which made it sound to me like this is very much like stock to leaf. So I've created this test piece. This test piece has a round boss and a round hole that will allow me to check this. And so what I've done is I have milled this out. Uh, basically, these tool paths will create a roughing operation, and then I come back where I've set this to where, as you can see there. And so that means that the controller, I can change some values and see what works and what doesn't work. This is uh, directly off the mill, and you can see this is roughed out. It's a roughing pass, so this is faceted. It's not a smooth finish, but that's fine. What I want to do is measure these. So I'll start with the the outside diameter, and you know, see where we're at, and you know, make sure I get it across the flats. So that's 1.035 roughly. Similar. Okay, so we're pretty close to 1.035. Now, I set this up to be 20 thousandths over, basically 20 thousandths stock to leave. 
Now, this isn't exactly that big because, again, it's roughing, and so the tolerances wouldn't be what you would expect. In other words, you'd expect this, if this is the stock to leave on the walls, that would reduce the diameter two times that. In other words, it would reduce it to 0 0.04 inches. Now, let's take a look at the inside diameter and see how we're doing on that. So I've got this uh, ID gauge. Okay, so that's reading, let's see, the mark that we can't quite see would be 0.95. So 0.95, let me do that. It's basically 0 0.95 plus 0 0.007. So that means if I did my math correctly, let me move this over so you can see it. Actually, I can't do math and speak at the same time. I can do math fine when I'm not speaking, so I'll just do it this way. 5 plus 0 0.007. Okay, which is 0 0.957. And if I subtract 1 from that, it means that the, the difference is 0 0.0. 0.043. So that's, you know, somewhat consistent in terms of the deviation from what I would expect it to be. Now the next thing that I want to do is set the, the wear. So I'm going to start out with the wear set to 0 0.010. So you can see I've got this set, um, the spindle has tool 1 in it. So I'm going to go over to the wear column and as I mentioned, I'm going to put in 0 0.01 and then press F1. And so that now I'm saying that if I understand this correctly, this will be equivalent to saying I want 10,000 stock to leave. So let's give this a try and see what happens uh, when I run the wear program. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to select the wear program. And that's uh, pretty small, it's doing a 2D contour, but I'm gonna probe it first. So let's fire up the machine and have a look. Now one thing that I did to make things a little bit easier is to make sure that the stock is basically in the center of the vise this way. And I can do that because I have these piranha jaws, which I'm not using. This is on top of the parallels. But it does have a ruler on top uh, where zero is in the center. And so we have one here and one there because this, this is two inches wide. When I have it centered like this, the probe will be able to come up and pick up that corner and I won't have to set the initial zero position of the probe because it still has it from the last time. You can see that I've stopped, and as a, when I ran the program, it produced this. It says tool too big to enter the cut. Use a smaller tool. Actually, I think I noticed the problem. I just noticed that that's not set to zero. So let me set that to zero, and then give it a try again. I suspect that's actually what the problem was. All right, let's see how this did. So I'll go ahead and measure it this way. Okay, that's pretty clear. Ten thousandths of an inch. So after uh, applying the wear, the outside diameter is 1.010. So it's actually not uh, stock to leave, but rather it's based on the, uh, the diameter. So this is basically how much to change the diameter. In other words, the stock to leave is going to be half this amount. Now, in a minute, I'll show you something on the machine because you can actually change this between diameter and radius. But we'll come back to that. Let's take a look at the hole. And I'm less... Uh, confident about my measurements with the inside diameter micrometer simply because I don't have as much experience. 
But if we look here, you can see that it's very close to 1. And so if we go in, it's 10, 5, 10, so it's 12 less. So the inside diameter, again, I can't calculate and speak at the same time, is 1 minus 0 0.012. So 0.988. Now, I'm not sure why there's a 2,000th uh, variation in between these, because I would expect this to be 0 0.990. But again, it may be because I'm not very good at using the inside diameter micrometer. Because uh, I have experienced that, depending on how I measure it, I can see noticeable variation in this. So I think I, I need more practice using these inside diameter micrometers. But I think the point is, now I understand how the wear works. Basically, when the wear is positive, it is like stock to leave. But the amount of stock that I'm leaving is half that amount. As I said, this is changing the diameter. As I mentioned, there's a setting, which is setting number 40 on the Haas controller, that controls whether the cutter compensation using wear is either going to be based on diameter, or I can change this to radius. So I'll go ahead and change that, and you can see it's now changed. And then if I go to the offset page and look at the wear, it now says radius right there. So Previously, if I go back to the settings and then change that to number 40, change it to diameter, and then go back to offset, you can see that this says diameter. So it's pretty clear uh, which one it is. I'm going to change that to, to radius, go back to offset. So now I need to cut this in half, so that would be 0 0.005. But I'm going to go to 0.002. And what that should give me is a equivalent of stock to leave of 2,000. So it should become 4 thousandths over. So let me put in 0 0.002, press F1. I shall do 0 0.003, make it a little bit more obvious. Uh, and then I'm going to run the program again with it set to radius and see what happens. So let's review what I did. So this, as I mentioned before, this is, was where that was diameter. And then I just changed it to a wear of 0 0.03, but this is radius. So as I mentioned, this is a change in the diameter, and then this should be changing stock to leave. So that means I expect to have about six thousandths remaining. So if I check it here, it's five thousandths. Now it took a much less of a depth of cut this time than it did last time, so that could have an impact on it. But yeah, we're seeing about uh, five thousandths of an inch. Um, so the new OD is 1.05 inches. And so it's not too far away. So it, it does seem like uh, this approach is going to work. So I think I'm going to keep it in radius mode. Now let me check the inset diameter and see what that looks like. Okay, so if I'm reading this now, it's about seven thousandths larger. It's one minus. So you can see these, these are still off, the inside and the outside diameter by, by a little bit. But if we look at the average of these, they're right where I was kind of predicting things to be. So what that means is when I had the, this uh, set to wear mode of radius instead of diameter, it is acting like stock to leave. And so that's something that I can definitely think about. Um, so the bottom line is that if it's set to diameter mode, then 
it's a little bit different from stock to leave. It's going to basically change, control how much you're changing the diameter by. So a boss will be this amount larger and a hole will be this amount smaller. Whereas if you set it to radius mode, it's pretty much the same as stock to leave. So it's really your choice as to how you want this to behave, but both of these, at least for the Haas controller, are an option. And this is a lot easier for me to understand than the description that I found for how Wear works in Fusion 360 as well as in the Haas controller. For some reason, I could not find a really simple way to understand and explain Wear cutter compensation. It turns out to be really simple, and I put together a summary, which you can see here, that shows the difference between when you're using diameter wear or radius wear. So when you're using diameter wear, the outside dimensions will increase by the amount that you type into the wear field. The inside diameter will decrease by that same amount. Whereas when you're using radius wear, it's the same as stock to leave, pretty much. So now that I understand this, I can apply it effectively and confidently, and I'm so glad that I went through this process. I'm just surprised and somewhat amazed that I wasn't able to find it explained so simply anywhere else. I hope you found this useful. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, or my patrons, who are listed here. Please help me grow the channel by subscribing commenting below if you have other thoughts about other ways of doing this, and give me a thumbs up. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.